thank you, Dr. Ashish, uh, for the kind introduction, and thank you, Dr. Anuj Maheshwari, sir, for giving this opportunity uh, for this uh, prestigious ACP India Chapter Symposium uh, of this Pregnancy Study Group India. Uh, I am thankful to you, sir, for giving this topic to me because it was totally a new topic to me and it was do not my domain of expertise. And when uh, Amit talked to me, he insisted that I speak on this. So I had to do a lot of research and uh, I am thankful to you because I learned a lot while preparing for this topic. So uh, I hope it will be use, uh, useful for uh, all the members who are attending this seminar. If my slides are visible, then uh, I will proceed with the uh, presentation. So uh, the, uh, today I am uh, going to talk about whether is, uh, whether dyslipidemia is a risk factor for the gestational diabetes mellitus, and we are going to uh, look into this association. So uh, why I fi find this uh, particular topic very interesting is that it gave me a chance into look into the normal physiology of what actually happens during the pregnancy and what are the changes which happen during the lipid in the lipid profile of a pregnant lady. So pregnancy in healthy women is associated with normal changes in lipid metabolism. And these lipid changes are essential for the growth of the fetus as well as for the development. Over the last few decades, we have seen that there is a surge in the number of patients with obesity. And now we frequently encounter patients who not only have pre-existing diabetes or pre-existing hypertension, cardiovascular disease, and many other metabolic disorders before they uh, conceive or they uh, attain pregnancy. Also, there are a subset of po populations of the women with gestational hypertension as well as diabetes, preeclampsia, and they have more marked derangement of the atherogenic profiles. So this is a uh, this is a new area where, which has uh, now inciting a lot of uh, in, uh, research interest. And this is a this is a field of dyslipidemia and pregnancy, and this is one of the hot area for the outcomes and the research. Uh, what I could understand from my uh, research uh, while preparing for this topic. So uh, what happens during the normal gestation is that uh, during normal gestation, uh, there are changes which can be predicted in the lipid metabolism. And this is, there is an increase in the lipid concentration as gestation progresses. What happens during the first trimester is that there is a marked deposition and hypertrophy of the maternal adipocytes. And this increased expression of the insulin receptors such that glucose is available to meet the metabolic demands of the growing fetus. So this is a physiological demand which is placed on the uh, pregnant uh, women uh, to meet the demands of the growing fetus and increase in maternal insulin in addition to the production of the progesterone leads to lipogenesis and decreased lipolysis and increased production of the lipids which are then transported across the placenta and metabolized. This signifies the essential role of lipids to the normal fetal development. So what we understand is that rise in lipid levels happens in all the pregnancies and this rise in lipid uh, uh, parameter is uh, important for the growth of the fetus and the development of the fetus. If you look at this, uh, both during the early pregnancy as well as the late pregnancy, the changes which happen in the lipid profile, they actually bring the nourishing elements which grows the placenta and help the fetal metabolism and the fetal growth. So this is one part of the talk, which I think now it is clear that why the lipid parameters they increase and why, they are, uh, why it is essential that for them uh, physiologically to increase. This is just a uh, very busy slide and it uh, gives the same information which I have just narrated that how the lipid uh, parameters, uh, they change, how the lipid is metabolized, they cross the placenta and how they support the fetal development and the growth. Now we look, in, uh, look into the individual parameters that what happens. Both the uh, total cholesterol as well as the triglyceride levels, they rise throughout the pregnancy. While the triglyceride, the rise, uh, they rise in particular and the rise is disproportionate in comparison to the other lipid fractions. And they may attain two to four times pre-pregnancy levels by the third trimester. For, uh, so, for example, the rise can be almost up to the tune of two to four times in the triglyceride uh, TG levels. However, these changes are felt to be generally non-atherogenic and fall precipitously to pre-pregnancy levels following delivery. So what, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what has been seen that the, the rise in triglyceride level is non-atherogenic during the pregnancy, but during if but uh, the inflammatory value, if it sets into pregnancy leading to other conditions, can also increase the cardiovascular risk. So pregnancy is also associated, associated with alterations in the composition and the size of the LDL particles. This is also very interesting. There are certain studies which have demonstrated that as the triglyceride levels they increase, there is a decrease in the overall LDL size. 
and with an increased proportion of the smaller denser ldl particles that that are thought to be more heterogenic so the, there is a change in overall ldl size and this may be contributing to the heterogenesis that happens also it is not just the ldl uh, levels what happens to the hdl cholesterol levels in normal physiology the hdl cholesterol rises and the apolipoprotein a1 level also increases during the normal gestation while this level peaks during the second trimester and there are studies which have suggested that there is a potential protective effect to the mother to the offset elevations in the atherogenic ldl cholesterol and the triglyceride levels it has also been seen interestingly that the multi paras women tend to have relative decrease in hdl cholesterol levels in comparison to their primary uh, paras counterparts and these derangements of the elevated ldl cholesterol fractions with lower hdl cholesterol levels they can be more pronounced in women with gestational hypertension and diabetes as well as a preeclampsia furthermore it has been seen that women who have higher concentration of small dense ldl uh, fractions during pregnancy they tend to have increased risk of cardiovascular disease later in the life as well so uh, this brings to me uh, uh, the other important uh, topic that what happens uh, what uh, how does the rise in lipid can be related to the preterm birth risk and the other complications one of the study called the abcd study it has shown that the atherogenic lipid profiles during the first trimester increases the risk of adverse pregnancy outcomes including maternal morbidity mortality as well as the preterm delivery another european community based cohort study involving almost 4000 known diabetic otherwise healthy women uh, the, the investigators interestingly they found that elevated triglyceride levels but not the total cholesterol levels during the first trimesters were independently associated with adverse outcome for both the mother as well as the newborn and these adverse outcomes they can be defined in the form of gestational hypertension without proteinuria and preeclampsia in the mother and the preterm babies who are too large for the gestational age so uh, what happens during the uh, lipid profile or if somebody who is already having diabetes before the pregnancy this is interesting to see that lipid profile in women with uncomplicated pre existing type 1 diabetes are similar to healthy women without diabetes so diabetes presence of diabetes in a controlled environment does not lead to any further rise in uh, lipid uh, is uh, the change in lipid profile uh, can be matched to the normal healthy women however when confounded by the other metal metabolic risk factors such as obesity hypertension poor glycemic control preeclampsia it can also lead to more than higher uh, more than normal elevations in the first trimester tg levels and lower levels of the hdl cholesterol in comparison to the healthy counterparts so predisposing to the other complications also one of the gray area is that most of the time we are not able to do any studies uh, in the pregnancy group because there are ethical concerns and one of the criteria you will always find the exclusion criteria of any trial any drug you will find that pregnancy pregnancy is always excluded so uh, um, uh, practically we don't have anything to treat this dyslipidemia during pregnancy so now this brings to uh, one of the key questions uh, to the topic of the day that whether the dyslipidemia is a risk factor for the gdm so we know that gdm is one of the most prevalent metabolic uh, complications or the disorder during pregnancy and there are studies which have suggested that there exists an association between disordered glucose and lipid metabolism in the development of the gdm and how however the results have been inconsistent so uh, i searched the literature and uh, to me this uh, one paper appeared to be the most attractive because it is a meta analysis published in the it is a part of the lancet discovery science e clinical medicine and this study looked into association of maternal lipid profile and gdm a systematic review and meta analysis of 292 stu studies and uh, nine more uh, almost 97000 women so uh, it is interesting to look into the design of this meta analysis the meta analysis includes a used database search was carried out including medline web of science cochrane scopus clinical trials duplication was removed title and abstract screening was done and more than 7244 research papers were excluded full text review 733 were selected and when further uh, modification of the research uh, criteria was done only 292 articles could be found eligible to in, uh, for inclusion in the meta analysis so what i i will not be going into too much details but i will be highlighting what are the key takeaways from this very very important meta uh, analysis which was published uh, as a part of the lantus Disc science discovery so this is clear that the cause of gdm is not fully understood obesity maternal age women from certain ethnic groups they have been identified as being at high risk 
we are more attention has been given to the association between uh, impaired glucose metabolism abnormal circulating lipid levels and consequent worsening of the glucose intolerance while the exact relationship between the maternal plasma lipid metabolism and maternal glucose remains unclear there are recent studies and enough data to highlight that gdm induces a state of dyslipidemia dyslipidemia consistent with insulin resistance also the uh, rise in lipid levels can lead to Uh, can uh, increase the risk of gdm also and future diabetes mellitus also so women with gdm had slightly significantly higher levels of triglyceride in addition significantly higher levels in total cholesterol level as well as significantly lower hdl cholesterol level were also observed uh, during this uh, when this meta analysis was carried out since a physiological increase in plasma tg and total cholesterol is a normal phenomena as pregnancy progresses it is uh, uh, it is uh, expected that there will be significant heterogeneities across the populations and this was also seen in this meta analysis because it is difficult to draw a line when the physiology normal physiology becomes a pathology and leads to disorders and the diseases so this is expected given the physiological increase in circulating tgs and tc as pregnancy progresses so it is uh, very difficult to determine what exactly is happening with the rise in the lipid levels also it has been seen that significantly higher triglyceride levels were found in women with gdm compared to women without gdm for the first trimester as well as the second trimester as well as the third trimester while the data for the uh, total cholesterol hdl cholesterol as well as the ldl cholesterol in women with gdm compared to women without gdm were similar it has also been seen that the east asians uh, that includes india as well as the pakistan they showed a higher Uh, we made a difference in the tg levels compared to the european counterparts while south asians and the other asians had lower uh, we made differences in the triglyceride levels so uh, as a population the east asian population is uh, again more predisposed to lipid abnormalities and these lipid abnormalities leading to impaired uh, glucose metabolism also also uh, the uh, so some of the key uh, messages from this uh, meta analysis are that the elevation of tg levels in women with gdm is more pronounced uh, in certain populations that is south americans as well as the east asians and this suggests that more severe com- complication associated with gdm in these populations secondly differences in diagnostic and screening pro- protocols as we know that they are not consistent all across the world and different protocols and different uh, guidelines are followed when the diagnosis of the gdm is concerned so heterogeneity again increases so there is a variation in tg levels differences between women with gdm compared to women without gdm in different studies so this finding was of the uh, this finding is of implication that more population compared to the previous meta analysis and there is a high level of heterogeneity whenever we compare such data globally so uh, this meta analysis has found that there is convincing evidence of biological possibility linking hyperglycemia and dyslipidemia and why they are saying is that when you compare normal women uh, normal pregnancy and you see the rise in the lipid levels and when you see those women who actually developed gestational diabetes mellitus the meta analysis found that the uh, cholesterol levels tg levels they were higher in those uh, patient uh, those preg- uh, pregnant women who were having gdm so this gives a uh, this uh, leads to this possibility that uh, th- th- this is the higher uh, lipid levels which is pre- probably predisposing to the gdm also however a bidirectional bi- uh, bidirectional relationship may also be true because that may uh, that requires further investigation so w- for women with gdm insulin resistance and high estrogen levels during pregnancy may cause the normal pregnancy associated fluctuation of the lipid metabolism to exceed the physiological adaptation also it has been seen that the lipid changes which happen in the women can lead to endothelial dysfunction of the fetal placental vasculature and this leads to the development of the fetal uh, aortic atherosclerosis which predisposes children born to mothers with gdm to the development of the cardiovascular disease later in their adulthood so the findings from this study also suggests that the elevated lipid levels particularly tgs is associated with future risk of gdm and could potentially be integrated into a risk stratification uh, algorithm to calculate the risk of gdm so this is just to uh, draw a parallel where we can see that obesity with gestational weight gain glucose intolerance hyperglycemia insulin resistance hyperinsulinemia and dyslipidemia they are not ha- they are all happening simultaneously predisposing the women to the gestational diabetes increase supply of glucose and fatty acids to the fetus and developmental progra- programming and the fetal adaptations leading to various kind of complications cardiometabolic disease development in the offspring with the age can happen so this is a fetal uh, origin of the uh, diabetes uh, which we call 
So I would like to thank you all for the patience listening. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much.